Thank you, thank you, and welcome to EWTN Live. I'm Father Mitch Packwell, and this is a program where we bring you guests from all over the world. And tonight, we have with us a special guest all the way from Germany. He is here taping a series of programs for our EWTN German channel. And tonight, we'll be speaking with him about how the sciences are not the enemies of theology, but they support theology. He's a Catholic priest and a professor of theology at Paderborn University in Germany. So please welcome Professor Dieter Hattrup. Father Hattrup, welcome. Thank you very, very, very glad to be here. Very Good to have you here. We, uh, but I must apologize because my German is not, uh, my English is not so good because in Germany I mostly speak German. No, that makes good sense. <laughs> I mostly speak English yeah, in yeah. America. <laughs> but we'll, we'll manage between the we, two of us. Yes. The, um, this is an important topic because a lot of times, uh, in fact, your uh, series in German means from enemy to friend. Yes. And uh, too often, science has yeah. been pitted as an enemy True. of theology and faith. And this is not necessary. Yes, that was my impression in my youth. He, I thought of people who uh, were saying science is now uh, in the, is capable of um, making uh, philosophy and theology superfluous. Right. And uh, shall I s say a name? Uh, sure. Um, August Comte in the 19th century said there were three phases of uh, human uh, development. Mm -hmm. The first, the religious uh, area, then the uh, second, the uh, philosophical area, and then the scientific area with um, positive science. Right. And this Comte died 1850s, I think, and uh, he, in my soul, made a great, terrible effect because I was religious, but um, I was not so stupid that, it, that I <laughs> thought that could be real, what he said, and therefore I had to prove it. Mm -hmm. And this was the reason uh, why I studied first before uh, becoming priest and um, priest and theologian is a scientific uh, matter, uh, that is mathematics and physics. So you did a doctorate, doctorate in mathematics? In mathematics, it's, uh, it's the same as in physics, uh, that are only technical uh, di differences between. Mm -hmm. But my interest is in uh, the philosophy of uh, physics, and I wanted to see how this uh, statement of Kant would be right also in the, you know, in the late uh, 20th century, and uh, when I discovered that the development of science has uh, gone away from this mechanical um, view he had in the 19th century and has developed away in an another shape, uh, I decided, no, I can trust my heart and can trust what uh, God has given in my heart and become a the priest and theologian uh, and the, the sciences do not withstand this of us what I'm doing. This is a, an important thing because the idea of philosophy, uh, of uh, this progression, the this progress, evolution yeah. of culture, yeah. even before Darwin it's came about, people believed culture was evolving forward yeah. from superstition and religion yeah, and to philosophy yeah. and then science yeah. will put all that behind. But this is something that's based on another problem. And one, in our conversation, we spoke about how the part of the problem of classical science is that it saw the world as a mechanical a being. mechanical world, yes. Th tell us, how does this mechanical idea come about? Um, I discovered it uh, step for step, not in the uh, one uh, moment. And I discovered uh, that in the beginning of the New Ages, let us put uh, Copernicus as a, a beginner. Copernicus. Yeah, in the 1500s? 1600s. If 
yeah, 1500s, 16th century. Uh, 16th century. Yeah. Oh, yes, this, this is yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my poor English. That's okay. <laughs> uh, 1543 um, he died, and he was the first Copernicus who wanted to have an overview over all, over all the world, over all in the universe. And he put the idea to reality, let the, uh, the Earth circle about the sun, and you uh, are above uh, the um, solar system, and you see all things with your eyes. And this was a great um, promise to all later people. Perhaps we can have an overview of, what, of, what, um, of all what is happen, happening in nature. That, that, I think, is exactly right. That's a key revolution of thought that you Use your imagination to think that you have an overview the of the overview universe. Overview of all, mm -hmm. and uh, this overview has uh, theological consequences because uh, you are in, uh, you are in contrast with God. He is the one who has uh, the overview, um, but if um, humankind isn't able to see what is to see all of what is. In, uh, um, happening in the world, he, the man, would be replace God with him, as himself. It's, uh, that's, that's part of this, uh, 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 in what I like to call the myth of objectivity. Uh, I can see oh. objective reality and know yeah. it all. There are some figures uh, 100, in, uh, 100 years later which uh, put the program in forward at Galileo Galilei. Mm -hmm. He was in practical progress in the overview, and uh, Kepler also in practical overview, and in theoretical overview ha you have um, René Descartes. He mm -hmm. put this yes. m the curior uh, curious word in French. He said, a man, if he follows my philosophy, will be the Maître et possesseur de la nature. That he'll be the master and possessor of or yeah. owner of nature. He put it uh, exactly in these words, yes? Mm -hmm. 1637. In, in this, uh, so, so folks can understand, you know, Rene Descartes, a lot of us study geometry in school. Uh, that's wonderful, geometry. In oh, yes, well, it is wonderful. But the problem was, he thought he could make a geometric model of all, of all, of everything, everything. And instead of looking at concrete things, he was working on an abstract model. This was uh, what he uh, explained in philosophical terms. Yes, mm -hmm. he is a hero or the titan of a philosophical uh, uh, matter. But um, the great problem was not from this uh, theoretical thinker, b because he didn't show us how all things can be uh, can be berechnet, uh, t t uh, can be calculated mm -hmm. uh, with mathematics, mm -hmm. and that was uh, one uh, fifty years later was Isaac Newton. He is a central figure in the mechanical. In the mechanical uh, worldview, uh, he lived uh, till 1727. Mm -hmm. Isaac Newton, he put uh, the central sentences and laws of nature in, uh, seven, in 1687. And this gave rise to a mechanical view of the world. And all were very astonished about this angelic angelical uh, uh, Botschaft, a genical uh, message, a genical message. Which it seemed to came from heaven. This uh, guy from England, uh, Isaac Newton. They, they often thought him uh, sent from God as, as an angel to put together two things, namely, uh, um, I think the um, the earthly physics of Galileo, Galilei, the earthly physics and the heavenly physics of uh, Kepler. And he put together this in one form, in one uh, set of, uh, of laws from 
1687, and with this uh, the dream of Copernicus uh, 150 years ago sh seemed to be uh, become real, a re a real, become become real. Yeah, in that. Um, one of the great things, and, and it's interesting that Newton, I believe, was a Protestant minister. He was he, he was believing, but he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't recognize he he bemerkte nicht he didn't recognize what he was doing. But the, but the importance of what he's doing is uh, again people saw well there's physics in yeah. the in the uh, solar system and uh, in the sky. Yes, there's physics on Earth. Folks did not b know that the same laws of physics could work and connect the two. That was a revolution yeah, that of was thought. And, and Newton is the one who did that with his laws of thermodynamics and so on. He put uh, several uh, areas together, heaven and earth. And right. And therefore it seemed he, has to, he's, he would have been explained all is uh, going on in the world. Yes. That's a f um, in German we say it was the first form of Weltformel, formula of the world. Yeah, the English? structure of the world. The, the structure the, the of the, first, he the would first have way of a world structure. He would have, he, he, people uh, thought he would have explained all is going on in nature. The problem with Newton's yes. thought yes. is that he himself began to fear he that it was to going to be yes. a deterministic universe, that free will, therefore, if everything is under a law uh, yeah. and in heaven on earth, then there's no free will for human beings anymore. Uh, but he needed uh, 20 uh, years to recognize this, that mm -hmm. he has made himself a fool with his, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with his laws uh, because uh, the freedom of man was destroyed by these uh, laws. Yes. yes, and he had his own explication how God could be a living worker, um, um, although uh, these uh, sentences were there because you must understand a little bit how this works. You have uh, equations, differential equations of the second grade, and uh, they do not s um, show up where the uh, body is. You must uh, integrate them from the second degree to the first and the, uh, uh, and the uh, zero degree, and then you know how, um, how the body is circled around the, around the, uh, around the sun. Uh, but normally you cannot solve these equations. Normally not. Mm -hmm. It is too complicated. Yeah. V very simple uh, situations are to be solved. And he made assumptions uh, that uh, was very interesting. I think his soul made him, forced him to do this. Um, he made assumptions that uh, the planets would go into the uh, uh, sun or would expel out of it, yes? Mm -hmm. But in reality, the uh, planets, the Earth included, is circling around the sun. I mean that, that was the, the problem of gravity, that gravity either should take these yes. planets, throw them out into the whole universe, or Be pull them into the sun and burn them up. Because it, does, it doesn't uh, hit as, um, because it didn't, uh, uh, because we see they are stable in a rock circling, mm -hmm. he said, that's the work of God. That's the work of God. Otherwise, they would be expelled or fell in the sun. Right. That was the first attempt uh, to, uh, p uh, to reserve a place for God. Mm -hmm. Newton feared his own theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are very great uh, names, Leibniz perhaps and Kant, uh, they saw the same problem. They say mm -hmm. the same problem. If Newton is right, man is dead, and uh, uh, God is also dead, and freedom is not existing. Right. That was the 18th century, and there was a, a guy from France named what is it? Delametrie. Mm -hmm. Delametrie said uh, in French, he said, "L'homme machine." The man is a machine. A machine.
mm -hmm. 1750, and uh, the great Kant and Leibniz, and obviously in a curious way also, um, Newton saw this as a problem. Well, and, and in fact, I think for folks to understand, the idea that man is a machine, yeah. the universe is a great big machine, and the man is a man. And some ideas, like the deist, that, well, God started it, yeah. but now the machine runs on its own. You, you don't need God, and man has no free will. You just let it go. Man ex doesn't man exist if he, ha if he has no free will? Uh, yeah. Without freedom, man is not man. Right. That, then you're just an animal. And it, that uh, temptation to reduce humanity to an animal yes. is still with us. This has come up in many of the sciences oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, for that's, instance, in this country, the, the, we've had sciences that way. That's the meaning, not uh, the, a view of reality. I think you can re-establish uh, freedom in a new way and more than f perhaps in the former centuries. Mm -hmm. uh, not with Kant. I'm admiring Kant, Immanuel Kant, Mm -hmm. uh, without uh, limitations. I, ad I'm admiring him, yes, mm -hmm. because he did the best who c you can do in the centuries which do not allow to think freedom. But he thought freedom in a way that I can cannot explain. He had uh, the right. idea of the thing of himself, das Ding an sich, was established to uh, guarantee freedom in the world. The Ding an sich in German. Yeah, the, the, the thing in itself. The thing in itself. It's a very famous item in philosophy. Um, but um, if we can go to the 20th century, yeah. um, then um, they came up a new theory in physics. And uh, I think my, my teacher, Carl Friedrich von Weizsäcker put it, if Kant, Kant, what do you say, Kant or Kant? Kant, yeah, we say Kant. We, and Kant, Immanuel Kant in Königsberg, uh, today is named Kaliningrad, mm -hmm. if, um, if he had known the theory of quantum quantums, mm -hmm. he had not had the necessity of thinking of the thing of itself. Yes. Because he, had, he could establish the freedom in another way. Mm -hmm. uh, now we must explain a little bit uh, quantum theory. And I, uh, as I read it in the 60s or 70s, in the 20th century, was I, when I was a young man, I slowly realized that the old fear, which has been risen up by um, by Auguste Comte, mm -hmm. the old fear, which had made me so, in, uh, put me in trouble, does not longer exist. I begin to realize, uh, reading uh, the good things, and that quantum theory, which appeared in the first uh, uh, half of the 20th century, made me uh, possible to think freedom is thinkable in the world. and. Uh, the ma man is not reduced to a deer, yes? The, this, uh, and again, so, so folks understand, yeah. if, you know, this mechanical universe yes, yeah. that, you know, Copernicus began Dream, dreamt to of, dreamt of, dreamed of, or dreamed of, and then <laughs> you have uh, people like uh, Newton coming up with a way to make it seem possible and Rene Descartes, a philosopher and mathematician, seeing, ah, we can make this abstract world. Mm -hmm. the, if that's true, and human beings don't have free will, then it becomes very easy to accept philosophies like Karl Marx, where human and beings are tools of the state to be used and determined. And I think it's worth for us to see that sometimes lack a lack of science, it wasn't yeah, yeah. enough knowledge of science we can put it that gave bad philosophy 
that then yeah, led yeah. to even worse philosophy I agree and totally. dangerous philosophy. I agree totally with you. We can say Karl Marx lived from classical mechanics and mm -hmm. dies with mech classical mechanics. Exactly. <laughs> because he, you know, the new developments of physics didn't happen yet in his lifetime. I don't think he would have been he was so committed to his social theory yeah. that he wouldn't be able to no, handle no, it. Not but, but when you get to um, uh, you know, the 1900, something brand new takes place in physics. Not in the 19th century. In the year no, 1900. That, that's what I said, 1900. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, you may say that um, uh, Karl Marx wanted to uh, re-establish re philosophy as a science. And uh, I only know the German word, uh, Geschichtsmaterialismus, Diamat. Historical di materialism. Dialectische materialism. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and, di and, and the dialectic materialism, where you see only the material world exists. And this should be a, a science, should be science, he mm -hmm. said, yes. because he wanted to uh, be an heir of uh, the s security of of uh, science. The right. Yes. Right. And in 1900, uh, there was a s first of a very calm and quiet revolution, and we have a name. I shall put this name. Please. Uh, the name is Max Planck. Uh, I, I, I don't go ahead. Do, do, uh, go uh, ahead. Talk. Uh, give us the sense of Max Planck, Max Planck and what and what he did. <laughs> he did what is often happened in science. He did what he had uh, uh, to expect. He was born 1858, and uh, in 1900, he, he wanted to uh, explain uh, what we say: um, Schwarzer Strahler, a black, a black hole. A black hole. No, 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 not a black hole. A schwarzer, not uh, Schwarzer Strahler. Uh, what's a radi Schwarzer Strahler in German? Yeah, I don't know Strahler. Uh, but anyway, go, de describe what it does. Uh, especially the sun is a, sh a black Strahler, black sh be, uh, although the sun has. A, very high temperature and is very shining. Mm -hmm. uh, this means um, that you can uh, put all strahlung, radiation, radiation. Radiation, B okay. Black radiation, or a black okay. radiator. Mm -hmm. This is the name of it. I, I don't speak English every day. Well, I didn't know that word <laughs> in German. So, so black radiation. Uh, right? Black so radiation. Mm -hmm. And um, you can put all frequencies of uh, um, radiation in this uh, uh, ra radiator, mm -hmm. and it all comes out in every frequencies. In mm -hmm. every fre all is obtained by uh, f uh, one frequencies from the lowest to the highest frequency. And he wanted to explain it. Mm -hmm. That was a problem of uh, ma many physicists in uh, 19 uh, years before and uh, years later. Mm -hmm. And he mostly, he mostly uh, was successful. The most successful explainer of this was Max Planck. Mm -hmm. But he had to do a revolution, and he didn't first recognize that it would be a, re a, a revolution, because he introduced into physics what he called um, Wirkungsquantum, a quantum of a the quantum effect. Quantum effect, we can uh, put it so, and uh, this had a, a Eigenschaft that uh, that his uh, that ha had um, Eigenschaft. He this quantum was as, uh, in otherwise put in the uh, physics as all other uh, quantities are there. All quantities in physics are able to be divided. Mm -hmm. You can divide time, mm -hmm. you can divide room, uh, space, and you can divide mass, all you can divide. But here first it came up um, a thing that you can divide. The, a quantum, the quantum of working also, so, uh, yes? And if, this in, if you introduce uh, such a thing 
in physics, in the describing, uh, in this description of uh, nature, you have a thing that doesn't fit to nature. There's an old saying of physics and uh, metaphysics, nature does not make a vacuum. No. No. <laughs> In, La in Latin we say, um, natura non facit saltus. The, the, the nature doesn't make its own height? Uh, what is saltus? Springen. It, it doesn't, we, we must find the, the real word. Nature, natura non facit saltus. It doesn't spring. Oh, nature doesn't spring. It doesn't spring from itself? Uh, no, from one, um, uh, from one, um, situation to another. Mm -hmm. As we see the uh, time and room, they fluently come from the one to the other. And uh, here, one thing springs from one s station to another station. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a very, uh, he was very disappointed of his own theory, although he was very successful to explain the black radiator, mm -hmm. and he became the Nobel Prize for this, 1910, mm -hmm. but he was not satisfied with this, with this Max Planck, mm -hmm. and this was a split in his heart. He, and uh, it's a special, uh, speciality of my view of uh, the uh, giants and titans of, new, of the new science and the new times, they often were uh, successful, but they didn't want what they have uh, have, have reached. Well, if in one of the issues is that if Planck was yes. correct, he was correct. Then the mechanical universe was, was not correct. It was cancelled. Yep, and that this you know made for a change that Newton's laws did apply in many situations. In many, but not in all. But exactly. Ex not in all. And no longer could you see the universe as a, mechanical a system. big mechanical, machine. A big mechanical system, yeah. But you had to, and then, if you don't see this as a machine, and the everything is not predetermined by these simple laws, yeah. then, then you the possibility of freedom Reappears. Comes back. Reappears. And humanity can be more human. Can, can with re real freedom. And can better re establish than it was before. Yep. And that's my item. Um, but, but we must uh, see uh, some development of the 20th century, perhaps, yes? Okay, yes. Uh, Max Planck was um, in 1900, and then came in a famous figure, the famous. Uh, scientists of the 20th century, Albert Einstein. And he's my f favorite uh, guest <laughs> in thinking of these uh, items. Albert Einstein, yes. he died 1955 in America, here in the USA. Yes. And uh, but uh, at that, that time he was living in, uh, in Switzerland, I mm -hmm. think, yes, 1900 and 1905. And he used the, um, the quantum of uh, Planck Mm -hmm. to explain some wonderful things, uh, radi radiation things, and he, therefore he became also a Nobel Prize 10 years later, yes. He done, didn't feel any uh, harm with the quantum, but he was a young man, 26, 1905. He became 30 and 34, uh, 35, he became 40, and then he became in trouble. He came in trouble with this quantum of, uh, of um, Max Planck because, because it was springing, yes, springing. Mm -hmm. He was uh, an adherent to the principle uh, in nature, n springing is not allowed, natura non facit saltus. Mm -hmm. And if there is a spring, then you can't have the overview over na nature. And the, not what is more important, he says, yes, 1927, he said, that was a, a moment of revelation for me. He said, I'd, I know it in German, but I must see to translate it in, uh, mm -hmm. in American. Um, 
I don't believe, he said, I don't believe in a personal God right. who, who sees over the man and judge, will, will judge him finally. I don't believe in this man, but in this century there is a great uh, b battle between faith and science. Uh, and science puts that uh, God, the race, um, the f latest reality, the, the first reality, is a person. And I can believe in this person. Although in our times, in the 20th of the 19th, uh, 20th century, f f um, science has put away uh, the, to overview all and has made um, it made uh, springs in the, in in nature, mm -hmm. and therefore he, and therefore I was thinking, yes, that's the problem of the 20th century. Science is uh, established as the only thing to uh, think over all. If there is a deterministic wo uh, world view, mm -hmm. which uh, totally de um, explains all, mm -hmm. but the great uh, Albert Einstein says. <laughs> this established atheism without a personal God, but the science is going on to re-establish a, a spring, uh, or a, the it was not uh, re-established, to go with, um, with, um, with spring, uh, springs in the nature, and therefore it can be deterministic, I deterministic, and if it is not deterministic, you can re-establish a personal God. So, uh, so Einstein's point is that he's realizing from Planck yeah. that what Planck didn't like, yeah. Max Planck did not like the idea that the universe is not mechanistic, yes. but he, he saw the facts. He saw the facts. And then Einstein re realized it's not deterministic, therefore the removal of God is not unnecessary it, and belief in a personal God makes more sense in his view of the universe. Now, we have to take, because like Einstein, we have problems with time. So we're gonna take a little break. We'll come back and explain this a little bit more. So y'all just please stay with us and be right back with you. We now have a break. Thank you, welcome back. We're with Professor, uh, well, we would say Father Professor Dieter Hatrup. He is from Paderborn University in Germany. And we're dealing, just to follow where we've been going so far, he, in looking at the history of science and its impact on philosophy and theology, we move from looking at the universe as a mechanical universe yes. where there's no freedom and human beings have no free will and God is unnecessary. Or if well, he exists, then he started the universe and let it go. This yes. was a common view called deism. Mm. And then we come to modern physics and in with quantum mechanics and quantum physics, we see that there are these, uh, they use the word in German springen, but it would be the word Jump. jumps. The, these yeah. jumps in nature that don't fit the mechanical laws. The mechanical laws would have it all worked out, but yeah. it, the, the, these jumps can't be explained by the old mechanics. So it's a, now we're getting a, the beginnings of a new view of oh. the universe that 
because there are these jumps in, 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 in that change, then the idea that human beings can have free will, they're not determined by a machine. They're not, you human are not, beings are not a machine. You are not forced and to think the, he is a machine. You are not. And, and the, that man is not a machine, that free will can exist, and God can become involved in the universe uh, but with this theory, and, and even Einstein, he didn't like the idea he of like a idea. personal <laughs> God. No. And, and, the, and we, we he, Father, Father Hatchup and I had talked earlier, it, Einstein had a few personal areas yeah, oh, that he might have, you know, not wanted God to be personally involved in, but uh, some areas of sin in his life. But at the same time, he knew yes. that it's possible for God to be personal yeah. and to be a creator, and uh, that that's that's important steps yeah. that science has to catch up with and theology has to deal with as well. So, from the, that's sort of a summary where we are. Continue on. The figure of Einstein was important for me, not in positively, but negatively, and then it uh, converted it positively, because he, he saw very well uh, the, uh, the clash of, <laughs> not civilizations, the clash of thinking scientifically and to think uh, theologically, mm -hmm. and this was a clash. That was a clash of the 20th century, it was a clash of all, all times. And, and um, he thought the, the mechanical view of uh, the e. Newton and the 19th century uh, was supporting the classical, uh, the, the view of atheistic, God may be only uh, the beginner of the world, the deism, you said deism. Mm -hmm or God is the same as the word, as, as Einstein put it often. He said, I believe in God, I believe in God. That's the God of Spinoza, the God of uh, mechanical system. I believe in God, but not the personal God. Mm -hmm. He put also so uh, famous sentences as, um, God doesn't play at dice. God doesn't play at dice. Well, I didn't think God was a gambler. Why would God, what does he mean by playing at dice? Yeah, he's joking. He's yeah, joking. right. All great men make jokes, yes. Um, and he's joking yeah. um, and means he doesn't rule the uh, nature and uh, all things in nature uh, with, uh, with uh, f uh, fixed laws, fixed laws. Mm -hmm. But these fixed laws, um, were interrupted with the jumps which uh, introduced, uh, which, ha which had introduced uh, Max Planck 1900, mm -hmm. yes? And uh, he himself made much, um, uh, many attempts uh, to reestablish the old view of nature. And uh, his companion in this, or his counterpart, was Niels Bohr. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1930, there was a final clash between these thinkings of is the quantum mechanics with its jumps, is it real? Or can it be re-established and we can, uh, we can uh, uh, put uh, the uh, jumps uh, aside, yes? 1930 in, uh, in Belgium, and he fought with uh, his companion, his friend and antagonist, uh, Niels Bohr. And after that, he put uh, quantum mechanics is not contradict in contradiction with himself. There is no contradiction in quantum theory. Uh, and you see, uh, from 1925 with 1955, he, uh, as he died, 30 years, mm -hmm. he did only one thing, one thing to try to make um, quantum theory uh, not uh, not valuable, not nicht gültig, un, uh, un, nicht uh, yeah, gültig. Uh, uh, yeah, un, un, uh, well, not unnecessary, but it would not have much uh, value for us. So no, not, no, ungültig, ungültig. It's um, in German and uh, 100 f uh, m times more. I thought about. Quantum theory, he said, 
then uh, relativity theory for what he is uh, famous for, mm -hmm. you can see under what pressure he st stood to make sure that nature is uh, uh, going on in the in the old-fashioned way of mechanistic um, uh, deterministic uh, passes. But uh, from 1930 on, he uh, realized that, uh, that there's no contradiction in quantum theory. But he didn't abandon his fight against quantum theory and made it. Uh, and uh, but, but I no need don't need to tell the history, which uh, ended in the 19th of the 20th century, when you have experimental uh, ex experiments in you when you uh, where you can see that um, the jumps are not able to uh, vertreiben, to uh, go make it make it away the mm -hmm. jumps and therefore you couldn't you, you couldn't get rid of you couldn't you, you disprove can, you, can, uh, you can rid of it yep. you can get rid of it of the jumps and therefore we must now f say j the elementary elements of nature are necessity and uh, Zufall, uh, chance. Accident, yes, yeah, chance. Chance, chance mm. and necessity. And uh, there we are now at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. What uh, shall we do with chance and necessity? And we must look at it. We must interpret these uh, terms. Um, you cannot reduce the um, the view in of uh, reality to, to say I only l love facts. I only acknowledge facts. Yes, there mm -hmm. are people uh, they are saying I only I do not believe anything than that what I can see. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I only so believe in very I, very many people will say that and and say that if I can't see it, I, it. But I, can, but I will explain that this is stupid. Yes. The world is not um, uh, consists not only of facts, but the facts do not fit together. Um, uh, we have necessity, and this this delivers facts. The necessity, I lift this uh, water up, and it goes up. And but there are also uh, uh, you can see this in uh, biology. There are also experiences in which uh, the chance may make uh, uh, shapes and there suddenly um, we can see sh shapes of uh, living and other things which we which we couldn't expect uh, to be mm -hmm. and therefore you must interpret no notwendigkeit necessity and zufall chance mm -hmm. and i've <laughs> thought over this for many years and I think I can show that f freedom or liberty is not to be demonstrated. You cannot demonstrate liberty uh, to exist. You cannot, mm -hmm. you ca couldn't, you have been able perhaps in the mechanical centuries to show that all is old only deterministic. Mm -hmm. That may have been shown up. Uh, but now we don't uh, see that is possible. But you cannot demonstrate freedom, the existence of freedom. You cannot exist. Uh, you cannot demonstrate man is free and is not reduced to a deer. Mm -hmm. But I can uh, give hints that is is very um, appropriate to think so that man is f uh, free, and I have the idea. I think nearly. Uh, Platon said it in a, in a, in a same or a um, similar manner. Similar mm -hmm. manner, freedom is a, a sh um, what is it? Schatten, schatten, shadow. A Fre shadow. Fre freedom is a shadow of chance and necessity. Freedom of man is a chance of necessity because uh, perhaps we can explain this word. Yes. Yeah. Freedom is a shape. Yeah, the, this is so. So again, we 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 are at a point. 
Yeah. Uh, and so we can pull it together here. Um, we're at a point where the deterministic worldview is, one gone. Is, is, is no longer, it's not only not necessary, it's not a good explanation of life. Not, not. And again, we, we saw experiments that we mentioned before, Marx, but we saw some psychologists who were deterministic psychologists that, if, you know, with Pavlov and his dogs, and Freud. That you can, and Freud, that you are determined and that free will does not exist. And they were using this mechanical, mechanical physics, physics yes. as their assumption. And just assu it was the background. But, uh, and they, they applied it to psychology. And many people then said, well, I'm not, uh, I, I can't help myself. And you, the, there was, in, in this country, one of, the, one of the big effects came from a biologist of wasps. Uh, yes. you know, the insect. And he said, human beings are no different than wasps in their sexual drives, and so there's no such thing. Uh, whatever your drive urges you to yeah, do, yeah. you should do it. You're determined. The no name of this uh, man and, was... And this was uh, Alfred Kinsey. Kin Alfred Kinsey. Yeah, Alfred Kinsey. And, and the, he became a big factor in changing our laws to decriminalize behavior. I, it showed up in Freud, in deterministic psychology, in this sexual revolution, all that. Now, the new physics says, wait, you can't explain the world mechanically. Yeah. Yes. There are these jumps, that t and quantum leaps. That's another word that we use Leap, a lot, yeah. the quantum leaps. leaps. And with that, you say, uh oh, you now can, freedom is, is possible. It's thinkable. We can't prove that it exists. But it is thinkable. But it's possible, and we can look at the hints, the clues that people have real freedom, and that that uh, and and you're starting to say about Plato, the yes. great, famous Greek philosopher, yes. he also could see these clues. I don't understand really the similarity between his situation 2,500 years ago, um, but he puts it in this way. Um, these guys, as uh, uh, Freud and uh, what was the other name here? Uh, Al Alfred Kinsey. Alfred Kinsey. Others. They were in the first half of the 20th century, yes? yes. And their heart was bounded by the 19th century, yes? Mm -hmm. And physical. Very much so. Um, I can try to show you a very small example how chance and necessity makes it possible to think that a single man, a single woman, are free in the realm of, in the, realm of um, the nature we are looking uh, now with this um, view. Uh, I have some minutes to do this. You have seven minutes. You have seven minutes to do it. Yes. That's, that's enough. Then, then I can do it twice or probably three times. Um, uh, if you are living in the world, and you have a will to do something. You want this uh, to lift it up, yes? And uh, then you have to uh, imagine that the necessity of laws that govern in a largely wide way uh, the nature must be, uh, must be in, uh, in good shape, yes? Mm -hmm. If I don't can rely on the gravi gravity law, I cannot uh, lift it up here right. because <laughs> if, if it, uh, the gravity constant will uh, decrease the ten the times that it was before, then uh, my uh, arm will uh, um, fall back and uh, the bones are uh, broken, broken. If I want to do anything in the nature, I must rely on laws, on fixed laws. Right. And then the old saying of um, necessity is in contrast to freedom does not longer exist. You must think it better. Freedom 
um, ne requires necessity in law, um, necessity in nature. Mm -hmm. Freedom requires necessity in nature. I have nowhere read this, set, this sentence, but in my head it has, it has shown up. Mm -hmm. So you have to. So for freedom to exist, mm -hmm. there have to be certain basic principles, certain laws yes, yes. that you depend on, like Other, gravity. Otherwise, if I, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if I don't depend on the law of gravity, yeah. I can't count on drinking this it's and impossible. it going down my throat. It's, and then it won't come back out. Perhaps, uh, and there may other. Yeah, things. and all sorts of other things. Yeah. So anyway, so we got those laws that that, that, that was we can the one on. side. The one right. side. You must have re reliable laws in nature. Right. To be free. Right. But it's not widespread. This uh, view of things, not. No. It's, uh, well, it's as a matter of fact, it's not only laws in nature, but then th we also have necessary laws in supernature. That there are there's natural law. Yes. And then there are laws we, that uh, that God we, gives as we well. We speak later about self supernature. We are well, nature. We don't have much later, so you got to get <laughs> going. <laughs> we want to establish freedom and liberty in this nature as we know it best. What has happened in the end of the new science, and we have the building blocks of what is uh, necessity. Mm -hmm. We have spoke of yes, and the necessity is nece necessary, the yes. necessity is necessary for freedom if it uh, sh should be exist. Um, but this doesn't, um, it um, doesn't, um, it may not be uh, the, uh, the whole explanation, the, the whole explanation, mm -hmm. because if all in nature would be necessity, then my will to lift up this uh, cup of water is not my will. So it's determined by the necessity. Determined by necessity, ex uh, for example, for firing the neurons in my head, yes? Right. If all in nature would be of necessity, um, it is impossible that I have fr uh, freedom, that, but I am a, a machine, yes? A right. Mach but if there is the possibility of an accident or chance, the yeah. Abfall. Yes, but as we look in nature into this realm of uh, reality, we find uh, the necessity, necessity is limited. Mm -hmm. The limitation of necessity is called chance. Chance. The necessity, uh, the, the limit, the limitation of necessity is called chance. And as we sh show, uh, as we have a view into the, the nature, uh, we see it is both real, necessity yep. and chance, and so we are very near to see uh, freedom is thinkable. So, the, and th that's one of the things that the, the physics makes possible. And when we start to move into God's commandments, there's a necessity there, but the, the fact that human beings have other choices and there's a limit to the necessity. We don't have to yes, obey yes. God's law. We can do what we want. Contrary to that law becomes possible. And then we have human freedom and choice. And this, this is a great thing. Now there's one other area I of necessity that comes into play here. I think and that is we're running out of time. We have run out of time. Um, and you know, it, it would be, important for folks to understand this important change what in physics and apply it and we'll have to uh, leave it as such for now for me, but it? you'll be back again one of these uh, I yeah, think yeah. we'll be doing another series so I want to thank you for joining us for the English side mm -hmm. and we'll keep working on uh, I'm making some glad more of that. to speak to have spoken to you and if you would join me in giving a blessing to our audience, may Almighty God bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you and lead you in all of His your ways by His peace. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we can do programs in German as well as in English, Spanish, and even some other languages now only because this network is brought to you by you. 
And so we ask you always to keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill, and then we'll be able to pay all of our bills too. God bless you, and thank you very much.